everybody. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Hi. <laughs> oh, that's my roommate. So, uh, hi. My name is MJ Aiken, but my, uh, but my real name's Molly. It's on my name tag. So I'm a nursing student at Jacksonville State University, located in Jacksonville, Alabama. I am graduating in exactly 20 days. Thank you. Yes, you should applaud. <laughs> All right. So uh, just so you can understand a little bit more about me, I uh, made a little slide. I wanted to share uh, a little bit more about me before I kind of dive in and share my perspective. So uh, I was raised in Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah. In a very conservative Southern Baptist household. Uh, I found secular humanism about like my second year of college and helped to found the Secular Student Alliance at Jacksonville State University in October of 2015, where I've been serving as secretary up until this point. Uh, so I wanted to take just a quick moment to experiment. So if you guys could just close your eyes for just a second. I want you to picture your ideal world. What does it look like? Who inhabits it? What does the social structure look like? How are decisions made in your world? So I don't want to call anyone out. You don't have to speak a word, but just be honest with yourself. Was your world filled with people who may look or think or talk a whole awful lot like you? So SSACon 2016 was my first experience in diversity and inclusivity. It was the first time that I really needed to pay attention to the uh, preferences of all the people around me. I secretly had this running list in the back of my notebook with everybody's names and their preferred pronouns next to it. I was absolutely terrified of people finding out the truth about me, which was that one, I didn't really know where I stood politically. Two. I didn't really know what it meant to be an activist. And three, uh, I honestly wasn't very comfortable using the term atheist to describe myself 100% of the time. And I'm still working on that one. So uh, maybe this conference is your first experience in inclusivity and diversity too. And if so, I want to be one of the first to formally uh, welcome you to this incredible community of uh, critical thinkers, and uh, progressive activists. And you may not believe me, but I'm actually really, really excited that you're here. So this community is probably not the first community that you've been a part of. In fact, if you think about it, we've probably all been a part of countless communities. Uh, if you really think about it, there are kind of two kinds of communities. There are those that you are unintentionally a part of by association or by geographical location. And there are those that you intentionally take part in every day. It's kind of inevitable. So for me, I'm a part of the nursing community whether I like it or not. It's the major that I chose. So you're a part of whatever community of the city that you reside in or the major that you've chosen to become slave to yourself. It's an absolutely inevitable. But why does it matter? So let's just take a step back for a minute. I want to really utilize those critical thinking skills. Take about 15 seconds and clear your mind. In a few moments, I'm going to ask you to write down the first few words that enter your head when I feed you a topic. The topic is your own community secular student alliance. I want you to do some internal investigation. What feelings do you get when you're together? What can you achieve together? What purpose does this community serve? You can open your eyes. So I wanted to gain some insight into the communities that I'm a part of as well. So I asked the same question of the people that reside in my home college hometown of Jacksonville, Alabama. These are the words that they use to describe our community. You can read some of them for yourself, but I appreciated horrible. <laughs> Nestled is a cute one. Uh, Gucci was an interesting choice. Outdated, quaint, slow, home. So I took it a step further and evaluated my own secular student alliance, which is geographically located in Jacksonville, Alabama. 
Notice some of the words that they use to describe that community. Considerate, motivated, inclusive, fulfilling. Killjoys was a nice choice. <laughs> So if these are located in the same place, and they're communities that are literally adjacent to each other, why are they described so differently? I mean, it's a, it's a stark comparison. So being a part of a community is inevitable to a degree, but why does it matter? Turns out the things that happen to and within your community actually play a great impact on your everyday life. And if you've been in tune with the current events of the world or the human race, you might have taken note of something change. That's right. Change is coming to a community near you. Whoop, I don't know what happened. I fixed it. So uh, this lovely graphic comes to us from the U.S. Census Bureau's 2015 Population Estimates and Projections. I really encourage you to take a moment and maybe read like the full 13 page PDF on your own sometime. It's pretty informational. But for now I'm just going to hit a couple of the highlights. The Census Bureau estimates that around the year 2020, more than half of the nation's children are expected to be a part of a minority race or ethnic group. And this shift will take place for the U.S. as a whole by the year 2044. They continued this report by predicting that by the time this shift has taken place nationwide, no one racial ethnic group will dominate our nation's population in terms of size. Now, depending on what kind of community you're a part of, this is either an incredibly inspiring forecast, or this might be horrible, kind of upsetting and worrisome news. Whatever community that you're a part of, it can benefit from two main things. Those things are inclusivity and diversity. So I found these nifty little definitions in a dictionary, but that's really not what I want you to take away from all this. When I think about inclusivity and diversity and community, I think about planning a potluck. In my mind, community is this long, empty table. And diversity is all of the plates and the food that's going to fill our table. There's a lot of potential here. There's Damien, and he's going to bring hummus and pita chips. And uh, Esperanza is going to bring a chocolate cake or chocolate chip cookies. And uh, Cody, Cody will bring a big bowl of salsa to the table. And then there's this guy, Todd. Todd's going to bring this big bowl of homemade coleslaw to the table, which is just not your favorite. <coughs> so uh, inclusivity is inviting Todd, even though coleslaw, not your favorite. Inclusivity requires, uh, inclusivity requires uh, inviting Todd even though you know he's going to bring the big bowl of coleslaw. Every person has something to bring to the table. Every person is a valuable asset to our community. And just because coleslaw isn't something that you would enjoy doesn't mean that somebody else won't enjoy it. And it doesn't mean that we should exclude Todd. It's hard to be around people who may be different from you. Maybe we could just consider eliminating the problem. We could just not invite Todd. I'm sure nobody would miss his presence, and certainly nobody will miss his big bowl of, po his big bowl of coleslaw that's not going to be present at the table. We have to really take a minute and critically think, is being a part of a diverse community that much of a priority to us? I think that no matter what part or what kind of community you're a part of, you can, uh, sorry. <laughs> you can uh, take inclusivity and diversity and implement it for just a few reasons. Those include, first, innovation. Being an inclusive community fuels innovation. As a human race, we've been faced with problems time and time again, some the same without little to any resolution. The way that we combat these problems is by coming together as diverse people. We all have different perspective, perspectives to share. They've all been shaped by our own individual human experiences. It's when we come together as a team with diverse ideas, multiple backgrounds, that we can confront these problems head on. It is diversity that leads us to breakthroughs. Secondly, 
having regular exposure to people who have different cultures or ideas than you encourages social development and enhances your worldview. When we decide to engage in communication with someone who's different than ourselves, we are challenging our own thought processes and our perspective. Through these interactions, we challenge our own privilege and start to appreciate other people's experiences. We begin unknowingly to develop a culture of empathy. Finally is acceptance. When we intentionally expose ourselves to various people and various worldviews, we're engaging in unique ideas and promoting diversity, which in turn takes a step towards normalizing inclusivity. This kind of interaction, with this kind of interaction, you'll find that perhaps we're not so different after all. Or perhaps we're vastly different, and that's okay too. When we allow ourselves to become more familiar with methods for facilitating acceptance, we take on a responsibility. The responsibility to give people the opportunity to share their perspective and to address prejudices that result in acts of discrimination based out of fear. Which brings me to a really important point. Inclusivity actually really exists as a spectrum. There are those who are really permeable to different methods of thought, and then there are those who are completely shut off to the idea of opposing thought processes. And then there are the rest of us who are like somewhere in the middle there. So we can use this scale to kind of evaluate every community that we've ever been a part of. And moving forward, the communities that we want to be a part of. Where would your community sit on this scale? And where would you want it to be in the next semester or the next year? So if we want to take steps towards becoming even a more slightly inclusive community, we have to be willing to take one step sideways on the spectrum. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine a world where everybody takes one step closer towards being a little bit more inclusive? What would that world look like? I wanted to share this quote, which is from a fellow nursing student in my cohort. She's come a really long way when it comes to being a diverse person, but also being an inclusive person. She told me to remember that someone who is intentionally inclusive in an already inclusive atmosphere is great but someone who is being intentionally inclusive in a hostile environment that is resistant to change is foreign. But it is a step closer to change. And it's hard because it matters. But either way, you'll be making a difference. So the truth is that every day we don't make an intentional effort to be inclusive, we are unintentionally sliding backwards just a little bit on the scale towards exclusivity. When we table, oh, this kind of obliviousness can be extremely dangerous. At what point would we realize that we're becoming more exclusive? And what would it take for us to climb our way back to a happy place on the spectrum? Perhaps you've heard of something called the cis, white, straight, Caucasian male problem. It's pretty predominant in the secular community. I'm sure other people have mentioned it in their talks today. Some people might tell you that maybe that's just the way it is. Or maybe you could consider that we've unintentionally excluded others from our community. When we table, are we actively engaging people of color? Maybe we're telling ourselves that we're doing them a favor, just letting these people get on with their day. They don't really look or talk like us, and they've got better things to do than stand here and talk to me. I think that we could take larger steps towards being inclusive in this way. <coughs> Are we truly doing the very best we can to be engaging to all students on our campus? So if you find yourself in a community that sits further towards the side of exclusivity on the spectrum, you should consider just one thing. If anyone is going to change this, it's going to be you. And I know that change sounds absolutely exhausting. But I'm going to let you in on just a little secret. You can do it and everything that you need is inside you and around you. When you start taking one, stop, one small step towards change, you're gonna find other people who share those progressive goals. And together, eventually, one day you'll all be trampling down and storming a path for change. So for breaking down the basics of building up an inclusive and diverse community, there are really two methods. The first one sounds a lot more complex to me. 
you can break out of your comfort zone. And you can be in constant search of opportunities to meet and engage with people who share your progressive ideals. You can start working inter-organizationally and work towards common goals and expand your organization's priorities. Or the second method, which actually doesn't sound so scary, but it takes a whole lot more guts than you'd think. You ask someone that you don't know for coffee. You don't have to share a single opinion of your own. All you have to do is let yourself experience human connection. Be an open ear for somebody else, just for a little while. I promise that you're gonna learn so much more about somebody who used to be a complete stranger to you. And you're also gonna find out a whole lot more about yourself. It's destigmatizing vocabulary and pushing comfort zones and making connections that will build diverse and inclusive communities. And at the very least, You'll have given someone a really positive experience with someone who's secular-minded, which I think is pretty important. So I should go ahead and warn you that there is one thing that degrades communities faster than anything else. That thing is fear. It's a really strong weapon. In fact, it's probably the strongest in the arsenal of those who are resistant to change. Maybe you've felt it or seen it in the environment or the communities around you. It kind of infects people like a virus. It kind of jumps from host to host. The truth is that fear is incredibly divisive. And communities who have been poisoned and torn apart by it can only be mended by intentional acts of recognizing and celebrating diversity and normalizing inclusivity. It is this passion that brings communities together. It's this passion that got me through my first SSA con last summer. I had to find the strength to overcome the fear of sounding unknowledgeable or potentially being offensive. I had to really open myself up and allow myself to be welcomed into this community of incredibly critical thinkers and incredible progressive activists. I was so surprised that they actually wanted to take part in the same community as me, someone who had a long way to go. I really want to implore you to assess yourself and your community. Figure out what it lacks and figure out what it needs and then find the courage to do something about it. It doesn't take a whole lot of effort to figure out where you stand on a couple of issues. And inclusivity and diversity are two of the main ones that I think we should start to implement more in our secular student alliances. It's these building blocks that are gonna build up successful communities in the future. I want you to know that you're not alone and there's nothing that is impossible when you really take advantage of your resources and the people around you who share a common goal for progressive communities in the future. I do want to leave you guys with one quote. Uh, it's from a woman who worked on behalf of the poor and downtrodden. She was a major uh, contributor and an activist for promoting uh, welfare for Syrian refugees and her life was unfortunately cut short because of her humanitarian work when she was killed by an extremist. This is Helen Jo Cox who was elected to Britain's Parliament in 2015. On June 22nd, 2017, what would have been her 42nd birthday, her community and her husband came together to do over 100,000 great get-together activities themed more in common with the goal of bringing neighbors and communities together and inspire inclusiveness. Helen Jo Cox said, we have far more in common with each other than the things that divide us. May these words continue to inspire you as you go back home into your own secular student alliances. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, yeah, one. Um, go for it. I mean, sometimes people look at the studies in that, you know, people don't need to be, um, I, guess I guess, prejudiced, but studies will find, like, for example, um, in a TED Talk on why boys are failing, they, uh, when they have the names of children on, on tests, on um, female teachers graded them, the boys did significantly worse, like 30% worse on average. Wow. Um, but then when, they had the names blacked out in the same tests and they graded them, the boys, it came back up and almost leveled out. And, but, and it isn't that, you know, the teachers wanted the boys to fail, it's just something inherent that they didn't really even 
didn't understand they were looking into as they after they did it. Um, so I guess my question is sometimes <coughs> we don't need to. Is it, how can we I guess check ourselves or how can we kind of be more cognizant of some of these prejudices? That's a really good question. Um, when it comes to prejudice, I'm still doing a lot of internal examination about um, what I can do better about the way that I kind of perceive the world and other people, because I catch myself doing things all the time, really, where I'm thinking, you know, why do I just say that, or why do I have this feeling about something that really doesn't even impact me? Um, but so that specific example you gave is really interesting. Um, I think that if there was one thing I could say to do uh, a little better is that intentionalness really doing internal evaluation and being open to discussions with people who maybe you don't know so well or maybe have a different viewpoint. That's the best way that I can find myself growing as an individual. Yeah, I, just, um, I think it's important to realize our own subconscious biases. Like, I understand, uh, <coughs> like, I might see, like, you two standing next to each other and he is older, he is a man, and I might think of him differently than I might think of you, and you have to realize that you have these uh, preconceptions within yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. I have a separate question. Mm -hmm. uh, is the guy's name Todd that bought the call song? Yes. Okay, so. That's why you swing Todd. Yes. Oh, yes. Go on. Okay. Sorry. So um, let's think of a hypothetical where Todd is also invited and he's being coleslaw. And uh, but his coleslaw cutter is severely allergic. And it gives him high. When he breaks out, he may die. But he still wants to bring the coleslaw. Should I still invite him? So what I'm saying is, what if someone's opinions are inherently oppressive to someone in my group? Should I still be inclusive towards them? I think that's like the real heart of the whole issue. Um, and as much as this answer is probably going to displease a lot of people, I think that the reality of it is that you do. You invite that person, but you need to engage in meaningful conversations. Maybe understand why coleslaw might not be the best thing to bring today. You know, um, but it doesn't mean that you don't want them there. It doesn't mean that you don't want to include them. Um, I find that we have to be willing to make some. Uh, well, I can't think of the word. We have to kind of meet each other in the middle to a certain degree. And when it comes to uh, radical ideas, you know, that can be really difficult. But it's those meaningful conversations where you sit down with an individual and explore why they might think something that I think you'll find a little more common ground um, and hopefully Cutter won't break out in eyes. <laughs> Anybody else? I think you had your hand up. I was just going to say there's some readily available implicit bias tests online that I would highly recommend groups or individuals check out if they want to explore and have discussion. That would make a really good meeting activity too. Awesome. Anything else? Great. Thanks for coming up.